Hello, I am Alexandra J. Johnson with the Entheos Academy for Optimal Living. Today I am chatting with one of our professors, Eric Mizell. Eric is one of the leading creativity experts and the author of 30 books. Today I am chatting with him about his course, Noimedics, Bring Meaning to Your Life. Hello, Eric. Hi, Alexandra. How are you? I'm fantastic. It's so wonderful to be chatting with you today. And I'm going to dive in to your course. What is Noimedics? Well, it's my attempt to update existentialism. Mm -hmm. There was a time 30 or 40 years ago when it looked like we might talk sensibly about meaning. But somehow that moment passed. It's very difficult to talk about meaning and so the opportunity passed, and now I'm hoping to reintroduce the idea that meaning is our most important subject. Really, we have to organize our lives around our understanding of meaning. Mm -hmm. And that there is this big shift that we can make from either feeling like we don't have enough meaning in our lives or spending too much time looking for meaning, mm -hmm. and rather understanding that we can make meaning on a daily basis. When we get that idea, our life changes. We feel much more instrumental, much more powerful, and actually like a different person. Hmm. Incredible. And meaning is so important for, for all of us. And what, what is the, how does noemetics differ from you know, other philosophies on life or religion? How does it differ? Well, I think most philosophies and religions yeah. actually start from some oughts. They, they, be, they put the cart before the horse and they say that one ought to do this or that, maybe serve the greater good or be obedient to a god or do something that amounts to an obligation. Mm -hmm. In Noemetics, I wanted to start in a different place, not from an ought, but from what is, from our experience of being a human being, our psychological experience of meaning wanted to look closely at how we actually live and only then move to how we ought to live. Mm -hmm. In most philosophies and religions, that movement is not really made explicit or not even done. The what is is sort of skipped and we go right to here's what you ought to do. Here's how you should live your life. And I didn't want to do that. I think it's unfair to thinking individuals to hop right over how we actually live and go to what you ought to do. So I think that's the big difference. I'm really honoring the is as well as the ought in life. <laughs> that's great. And so so the, the meaning, how do we make the, the shift to, I love this idea of making a shift from seeking meaning to making meaning. I love that. Can you share more on that? I think, first of all, just hearing it helps. I, I think it has the kind of resonance that once you hear it, you kind of immediately get an idea of what that might mean. So I think the language here is very important. When we get language for an idea, then we can make it our own really quickly. Mm -hmm. But then in addition to just hearing the idea of making a movement from seeking meaning to making meaning, are all the tactics that are required to actually make meaning on a given day. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a kind of philosophical underpinning of this paradigm shift. But then there are the act there's the actual doing. You know, in therapy... It's often said that insight is not enough, then there's the work. <laughs> in philosophy, too, insight is not enough, then there's the work. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things this class will really help with is both providing the understanding of what the phrase making meaning means, but also lots of tactics and strategies for introducing it into your life. Mm -hmm. I love that, the, the practical, because so many times we can get into our head and like, this sounds great in theory, but then actually right. putting it into practice is a whole other game. <laughs> and we want the practice, I think, to be a little richer than just sitting cross-legged. Yes, You definitely. know, there are lots of practices associated with philosophies and religions, but when you look at them, it's not, not really so clear how they help you live your life. They may certainly help you deepen an experience mm. or get calmer or do something like that, but not necessarily live your life the way you intend to live it. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm hoping that the practices that I share in this class really help people change the way they live their lives. Hmm. Brilliant. And one of your, your ideas, your, your key ideas, is around making investments. Can you share a little bit about making investments and what that means? Yeah, it has to do with the idea that we're faced with costs, opportunities, choices. Life is about making choices. Mm -hmm. And we make them whether we make them or not. Mm -hmm. Us deciding to be here now means that we're not doing something else at this given moment. The idea of a meaning investment is, is looking at your life as a series of choices and making very conscious decisions about which of those choices you want to honor, which you think are more important than which others, and the idea of investing in that choice. It's one thing to say, I'm going to spend an hour on my novel, let's say. Mm -hmm. But then to, as you approach the computer, get weaker and weaker as you get more and more anxious about actually writing your novel. So you want to approach the task that you've set yourself with strength. And that's part of what I mean by making a meaning investment, is that idea of really throwing our capital into the things that we decide are worth doing. Hmm. Yeah, even you just sharing that, I'm like, I feel nervous. <laughs> like that's like, <laughs> you know, you're like stepping into it. Of, okay, that's right. Here it is. I'm, I'm in fully. That's right. In one of your other ideas, too, you have a seizing opportunity, which I think plays into this perfectly. What, what does that mean? Seizing opportunity, how can we do it? Why do we want to seize opportunities? The idea of seizing meaning opportunities has to do with the idea of there being a variety of experiences that human beings have found meaningful. Mm -hmm. Everything is meaningful to somebody, so there really are an infinite number of meaningful experiences. Nevertheless, over time, we sort of have discovered that there may be two dozen or so kinds of experiences that we find most meaningful, whether it's relating or creating or being of service or actually having ambitions and and being accomplished, there are a certain number of things that look to provide us with more meaning than other things. Mm -hmm. The idea of seizing meaning opportunities is to to see this wide array of choices that we have, this menu, so to speak, Mm -hmm. and then to say on a given day, I'm going to seize the opportunity given to me to relate today, or I'm going to make an opportunity to relate today. Mm And then I'm going to make the opportunity to create today. And by understanding that these are opportunities that cause us to have the experience of meaning in a way we get to create the meaning in our life in a daily way by choosing and seizing one thing after another. Hmm. So empowering. I mean, it feels like it's really just giving you the permission and the strength to stand in your power for what you want and really seizing your life. I think that's really true, and I want to just piggyback here for one second and say that not every minute and not every hour has to feel this way. Right. It's a mistake to think that we need meaning all the time. It's, it's a natural mistake and a logical mistake, but actually a profound mistake. If we were to seize two or three or four important meaning opportunities on a given day, we could also relax some of the rest of the day and let that time be, so to speak, half meaningless. Hmm. And it wouldn't really matter to us. We get to earn that two hours of television <laughs> by eight hours of having seized meaning opportunities. So this is not an agenda for working around the clock mm-hmm. and invest meaning every split second. That isn't really the idea here. The idea is to learn how to strike a balance between those efforts and moments where meaning resides and those efforts and moments where we can be more relaxed and, so to speak, more careless about meaning. Mm-hmm. And you find that for most people, they're looking for for meaning in their lives with, with the work that you do. For, for, the, for the people I work with, that's true. It's not clear that it's species-wide at all. Mm-hmm. There's a certain complexity that comes with this need for meaning. Mm-hmm. You may be born. You may be born stubbornly with meaning needs that other people don't have. You may be that kid who pops out of the womb and says, I don't know why my mother and father are doing any of the things they do. It makes no sense to me. I'm going to go my own direction. So it's not at all clear that everybody has the same sorts of meaning needs. But I think most intelligent, sensitive, creative people do have these meaning needs. And for them, this is a philosophy that's going to work for them. Mm -hmm. And then... 
something that they can gain from the course is what I'm hearing potentially getting courage to actually following their their own path, their own meaning. That and as you said, being being empowered to be the individual they in fact know they are. Mm. Because there are lots of pressures on us to conform, to not be individualistic, to go along, to get along. And it's really important that we do stake out our own path on our own journey or else we don't make ourselves proud. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a core idea here that one of our goals in life is to, in fact, make ourselves proud by our actions and our efforts. We know that we don't enjoy losing a week, a month, a year to nothingness. It doesn't Mm -hmm. feel good. We know that we haven't manifested our potential that way or really met ourselves where we want to be. So this philosophy is about making yourself proud and doing those things that you had always intended to do. Now you get the opportunity to do them. (laughs) Awesome. Very cool. And for people, there's the anxiety and depression. What I'm hearing, too, is that this is such this is a way to make yourself proud. I mean, when you're saying that, I got tears Mm -hmm. in my eyes of like. That's what we all want. We all want to feel proud, and that anxiety and depression falls away when we're really, we're really going for it. Yes and no. It falls away in a certain sense, but also one of the things that I that I really ask of people is that they embrace anxiety mm-hmm. rather than hoping somehow to avoid it. It needs to be embraced because if you're going to live life on your own terms, that means that you're going to do a lot of things that the world is not necessarily in line with. Mm-hmm. And you're going to make yourself anxious as you go down your own journey. So therefore, it's actually important that you stop trying to fight off anxiety and just embrace it, but have lots of cool anxiety management tools. Yes. And the class will also teach those anxiety management tools so that you don't have to fear anxiety so much. And so that you know what to do when the anxiety wells up in you and you're trying to make a difference in your own life, the anxiety wells up, now you'll know what to do. Fantastic. I love it, love it. What a great course. So who is this course for? Well, I think it's for anybody for whom the word meaning resonates. Mm. If the word has no particular resonance, then... I sort of don't want to, I don't need to sell you on it. You kind of have to be interested in the word to begin with. If, however, the word has always had some significance for you, some resonance for you, that almost certainly means that you've not found enough smart resources out there because there have not been previously that many smart resources around meaning. So if the word has some resonance for you, then I'm sure that the class will also. Perfect. And what's, just before we wrap up, what's one tip somebody could start using today to dive more into this, this conversation, the, the conversation around meaning? Well, if I were to give one simple tip, it's the idea that you can wake up and decide in the morning where you're going to invest meaning on that day. I call that a morning meaning practice, hmm. but it can just doesn't have to sound as elaborate as a practice. It can just be five or ten seconds of a certain kind of mindfulness where you look at your day and you see the boring parts and you see the dull parts, but you also see the parts where you know you're going to throw yourself in, throw your capital in. Mm. So the idea of a morning meaning practice where you orient your day around meaning, I think is a tip that anybody can get started with quickly. Absolutely, and it doesn't have to be hours, like you said, just, you know, five seconds, ten seconds before you start your day. That's right, just making certain decisions each day, first thing. Hmm. Fantastic. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. This is a brilliant course, and I know it's going to be serving a lot of people and helping them with meaning and very excited about it. So thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thanks for chatting. (laughs) Bye. Bye Bye-bye.